All right, Paul, Republicans celebrated their bill. It passed in the Senate. Democrats are celebrating theirs. It will likely pass in the House. But won't that mean nothing happens for the tens of thousands of protesters asking for something? I sure hope not. Excuse me. It didn't pass in the Senate. Sorry. Pardon me. It didn't. But it was blocked by Democrats, meaning this thing isn't going to go anywhere. The two will never meet. And this is a moment where people have to insist on accountability and transparency from the police. And if we look at these two bills that are pending in Congress, the Democratic bill has a lot is a lot tougher with regard to enforcement. So it says that unless police departments reform in important ways, they're not going to get any federal money. The GOP bill, on the other hand, looks at the problem as just a few bad apple cops, and it's got some recommendations about ways that police departments can get rid of those few bad apple cops, but not a lot of enforcement, not a lot of teeth to the GOP bill. So where does one go from here? Well, this is going to be a a, a political food fight. The Democrats understand that this is a moment for reform, and so they're going to call the Republicans bluff. Again, I think the Republicans are getting a lot of questions from their constituencies. I had the honor of testifying at the House Judiciary Committee uh, hearing on police oversight, and none of the Republicans attacked any of the specific provisions of the Democratic bill. Republicans made a big deal about defund the police, but that's not pending before Congress. Even President Trump's executive order acknowledges the need for what he calls cold responders. So when someone calls 911, in addition to the police showing up, in appropriate circumstances, a mental health counselor would show up, somebody who's skilled at squashing neighborhood beefs. Not always the people with guns are the best first responders. Again, even President Trump acknowledges that. So the questions for the Republicans are, Will they meet this moment, or is this just going to be another partisan political issue where they will ultimately be on the wrong side of history? This is about racial justice. It's about social justice. It's about economic justice, especially for people of color. Speaking of your testimony, you were specifically asked about the legalization of marijuana. In your mind, is that part of the criminal justice solution? It's got to be. You know, people like Cory Booker, Bernie Sanders have said, unless we have marijuana legalization or decriminalization, the reform of police isn't going to work. Folks understand that marijuana is legal in about 11 states. 37 other states have decriminalized it. But Stephanie, don't get it twisted. About 800,000 people every year get arrested for weed offenses. Police arrest more people for marijuana than they do for every violent crime combined. And the vast majority of people who get locked up for weed are black and Hispanic, even though all of the research shows that blacks and Hispanics don't use marijuana more than anybody else. It's classic selective law enforcement. It's unequal justice under the law. But marijuana enforcement gives police superpowers. They can stop and search. They can search cars. They can detain people. All they have to say is, we thought we smelled weed. And they can unleash all of these powers that they use selectively against African-American and Hispanic young men, especially. And so marijuana legalization or decriminalization has to go hand in hand with reforming the police. So what have you seen from states that have taken steps to legalize marijuana? Uh, hundreds of billions of dollars going into the tax coffers. And a lot of these states have dedicated these funds towards schools, towards housing, towards social justice issues. A lot of these states have understood how unfair it is that the marijuana laws are rooted in racism. If you look from the beginning, the concern was never about public health. It was about men of color using drugs to seduce white women. When people think about the legalization of drugs, we should really think about the re-legalization. For most of the history of this country, 
Drugs have been legal. And if you look at what made them illegal, it's all about surveillance and control of people of color. First drug law was in, uh, in San Francisco. The concern was people who were described as Chinamen were using opium to seduce white women. And again, just go down the line, every drug criminalized, all about race. Again, you got to take this superpower away from cops to enforce marijuana laws because they're going to use it to target black and Hispanic men. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.